coming. Thank you for coming on my podcast, Benny. Yeah. <laughs> is there an intro? Which camera no do intro. I even look at? There's like, you can just like look at me. What's this camera filming? Is this filming That's us or just the, oh, I thought it was just like filming the plant. <laughs> no, it's me and you. Okay. Yeah. We're here. Yeah. So I'm going to give you an introduction, I guess. Is that how it works? I've know. never, I've never seen your show. <laughs> you don't need to. Okay, <laughs> this is Benny. Benny is a music producer. He's produced like every one of your favorite artists hits pretty much all of their best songs you can google it i'm not even gonna list them because it's like fucking insane but like every single song what an intro I know. That, that was a good, <laughs> this mic is so heavy <laughs> is I like it, it, doesn't it feel kind of like a proper yeah, it's like, like you weighty can hold it, you know yeah i'm curious about you as a kid figuring out that you were extremely talented <laughs> <laughs> uh Wow. You've had so much success over the years. Like I Googled and like did my research and it's actually like insane how much you've touched in terms of like what songs I grew up listening to. Like every single song I pretty much like. Yeah, Even you're like the a- 303 you're, shit. Like- I know your age. You're like, <laughs> you're like prime demographic. Like it's Absolutely. like, that was like, I, I wrote your childhood. Bro, teenage dreams insane. When I was a kid, I was just like, always into music my brother was a really big fan of music and we lived right near a record store like what kind of interest in music i was just like about music like i was like banging on everything like i was like about making beats kind of thing yeah and i didn't have like i I didn't grow up in a family where we like had like equipment or like Mm -hmm. that just like wasn't a thing like nobody in my family like ever made music in my extended family nothing like everyone just like went to college, did their Mm -hmm. thing. By like four, my brother would take me, and this is a different time than you. We would go to the store and we'd buy singles. So we'd buy cassettes. Mm -hmm. And like I got so into it, I'd get so excited. Every week we'd go. And I was like so hyped. And we had like a boom box, and we had two of them, two Mm -hmm. small boom boxes. And I would like press record on one and like sing into one and then like stop it and then like play that and then like make a beat with my hand and then like record it into the other one and then keep going back and forth. What I didn't know then is I was like creating like multi-tracks. I was like making yeah. like an eight track. Like, and I didn't, I didn't even, I didn't know. Mm-hmm. I was just like- You were having fun. Yeah, yeah. I was just like so into it. And then basically fast forward, essentially I won a competition when I was like nine to go into a real studio. And I recorded this song called Easy Life. Mm-hmm. And I was like a rapper. <laughs> and Are I Are you like, rapping on it? I was- rapping <laughs> and i uh i became a i became a rapper and i like really was like going hard at it then like it actually got real mm-hmm. when i was 13 14 i got like a bunch of attention from like uh a bunch of record labels somehow so basically wow, where were you so, posting your music no there, there wasn't po- you couldn't do that back yeah that's then. what i'm saying there, there, like like how did YouTube they find didn't you? exist. Like none of these things existed. <laughs> but how did they find you then? So, like, so yeah. yeah. So my brother was in a fraternity mm-hmm. at college, and one of his friends was like a dude who made music, and he had like a studio. His name was Sam, and he was like the first person ever to put me in like a real studio. Like so, I was like in a real deal studio, and the first thing I ever produced like for real that I got paid real money for. Mm-hmm. Remember, I got five hundred dollars <laughs> for for two beats, and I was like so happy and it was for so there's this guy named Jonathan Schechter well he was like the first guy to put out Eminem's music and he's like a you know legendary dude from back in the day he also had like one of the most successful softcore porn series (laughs) and he had this thing called Hip Hop Honey. Yeah, he had a company called Hip Hop Honeys and it was like basically like all the video girls dancing like with their tops off to to like beats and I was those (laughs) I was one of those beats and that was like my first thing and I remember like I got it in the mail and I was so stoked and I was like I like ran downstairs and like put it on the VCR and my mom like confiscated it from me and I was like mom come on like this is so cool and I would like invite all my friends over and I'd be like check this out and I'd like play it and it was like porn and beats it was like I was like the ultimate king that's awesome. That's a fir- like a great first I paid know. job. Yeah, that was that was like that was like my <laughs> first pay. I'm, I guess I was in the porn industry. Yeah, straight up, you kind of were. It's tight. Later, I used to cold call record labels. Mm-hmm. So I would like 
call a record label where I knew like Jay Z was signed, and I would like look up who his lawyer was online, and Jesus then Christ. and then I would call and pretend I was the lawyer and be like, we need to speak with the CEO of the company right now. Like, there's something we have to do. And like sometimes I'd get patched through, and when I got patched through, I'd be like. It's not actually his lawyer. I just want to play you my music. And then like, event. Shut the fuck up. You did that? How old would you have been? That was already like when I was like known a little bit. So I was like 16 at that point. My manager today Mm -hmm. was one of the assistants for one of the people that I used to cold call 17 (laughs) years ago. So it's like, you never know. That's also, it's like when I see people being dicks to like interns or something, you never know. Like I was an intern. We were all like, we all started out as nothing. Like you just be nice to everybody. Yeah. You know, because you never yeah. know. Even if the, you never know, like, yeah. just like be nice. Of yeah. course. <laughs> no, but like, I'm yeah. saying, like, no, ultimately, like, you just yeah. never know. Mm-hmm. And it's like, I've seen so many people, like, especially in my life, that like treated me like terribly when I was mm-hmm. coming up and they're still in the music industry. And like, it just, yeah. okay, back to this. How do you think about those people, though? Like, they treat you nice now. Like, do you look at them differently? I don't hold grudges. I'm I, not, I'm like, the same, but like, I do look at people like that differently. Yeah, I'm like, oh. Makes sense you're in the entertainment <laughs> world. I don't like fit in in the entertainment world. I'm not like cutthroat enough to be in the yeah. entertainment. Luckily I have like managers who are good. Like if if I wasn't, I'd be like, yeah, sure. Just have my song for free. Like do whatever you, cause I'm just so happy I'm making music. Like I'd be doing it if, it, I'd be making music and like creating things even if I was, you if you know, weren't getting paid. If, yeah, if, if nobody, I worked yeah. a job and I would rush home in high school, like I would, I would like run, I would skip school to make music. This yeah. has like always been your thing. Always, always. Like I was traveling to New York and stuff by the time I was like 14, every weekend. Doing what? Doing meetings. Was it always producing? Like, or were you still at that time? Rapper. Okay, so, so I was okay. a rapper until I was like 15. Okay. And then I was like, I'm just gonna be a producer. Were you good at this point or no? No, terrible, okay. terrible. Do you find like creativity comes like through to you and you give it into the world, like kind of like inspiration does? Or do you find it's like a formula and you tapped into that? First of all, I'm, and people are always like, you're being humble, you're being humble. Mm-hmm. I am not very good at making music. <laughs> like I'm not, like I swear to God, like it technically making music, mm-hmm. like I'm not great at making music. What I, part aren't you good at? Everything. <laughs> like honestly in every room, I'm like, why am I here? <laughs> so, but I think what I'm good at is So when you work with a musician, you're essentially like, you're a therapist. First of all, I don't work with anyone who's not my friend. Yeah. Because I would be like so bad at that. Like (laughs) I'm, I'd be so awkward. Like, so like when you meet new artists, you have to kind of like form a friendship with them first. Yeah. Like you go out or some shit. Yeah. Usually I'm just like friends with like the first time I met Ed Sheeran, we got like set up on an email and it was like Mm -hmm. so awkward. Mm -hmm. And I was like, and like everyone's writing, they're like, we'd really like it if you guys worked together. And I'm like, I don't know this dude. And this was before anything. Mm-hmm. Like he before he was like bigger. Before or like the A team. Yeah, this was right when the A team first came out. I just remember I didn't answer for a day, and all I wrote was, "I really got a shit." Like that's all I wrote, and like nobody answered the email, and it was like for like days. Ed wrote back, and he was like, "I also have to shit." And then I was like, "Okay, yeah, okay I fuck he's with cool, you." Yeah. Uh, and then so one day we were like, "Let's write a song." We wrote, uh, "Don't." Uh, a song that me and him did that was like okay. one of his first like breakout ones over here like on radio and so we, you wrote that the first time you guys wrote a song the together. first time yeah. we wrote a song and we were like oh shit we can like write songs <laughs> and then he like called me one night like a year later and like we'd kept in touch and like mm-hmm. became friends and stuff and he was like I'm like really fucked up right now like he was just like at a festival he was like fucked up and he was just like I think I'm breaking up with my girlfriend. And he like mm-hmm. came to me on some like real shit. Yeah. And he's like, and he's like, I just have this feeling with you. You know, it's like I haven't felt connected with someone like this in the music industry and 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 you feel like one of my friends from home. And we just started talking. And from then I was like, Hey, why don't I just come on the road with you and we'll just write? And mm-hmm. then basically I went on the road with him for like a year and we wrote Holy shit. uh the Divide album. Mm-hmm. So it was like so like that's how the situations yeah. happen. Like I knew Halsey for years before mm-hmm. we made music and it's it, I just think it's more comfortable because basically I have to be like how are you feeling? Yeah. If someone asks you how you're feeling, like normally, let's say you go into like a shoot or something, yeah. you're doing a shoot, and they're like how are you feeling? No matter what, you're like, "Oh no, I'm awesome. good." Yeah. And you're like, "Yeah, you know, like I, I You know, I did this the other day. I did that. Mm -hmm. And then I have to be like, okay, cut the shit. Like, how are you really feeling? (laughs) Yeah. Sometimes there's like tears. Sometimes there's 
anger. Sometimes they're like, no, I'm actually feeling like really good. And and you and that's how you get to the bottom of it. And you got to create like it's got to be a comfortable experience because nobody wants to like share with someone yeah. when they don't feel comfortable. So it's so is that like the first thing you do is like it's kind of get emotions just out. You just yeah. talk about it. I'm always are like, you writing at this point? Is this like lyrics? It's just like the over overall okay. thing. You're just like, I'm like, what do you want? I might play music and be like, mm -hmm. you know, what vibe are you into? Yeah. Like, what's what's going on? Like, honestly, like sometimes we just like chill for the first day and we don't even work. Yeah. Like me and Phineas were talking about it uh, yesterday, actually, because we had had sessions mm -hmm. and never written a song. Like we wrote at the very beginning of him and Billy's career, I went in with both of them when she was like so young, she was like 14. And we like wrote like a bunch of like half-baked ideas. And then like every time after that, I never had written a song. We would like start one and we just hang out. Sometimes he would just come over to my house and we would just like hang out for five hours and just like talk about life. <laughs> and then he'd leave. And then one day we wrote Lonely, you know? Mm -hmm. So it's, it, it, I don't rush. Wait, did Phineas write that with you guys? Yeah. Oh damn, yeah. I didn't know that. Wait, so Phineas also produces because I know he yeah. does like Billy's whole show. Yeah, 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 yeah. He writes and produces okay. in incredible. Yeah. Insane. Yeah. I it's, like his own stuff too. Yeah. I've heard some of his own. Yeah. It's insane. Like him and Billy are like, it's it's just like another level. Yeah. Like that's why I'm like, I am not talented. Like yeah. those people are like very talented. Why do you say that? Like, why do you like, what do, What are they doing that you're incapable of? I don't know everything. I'm just like, like what? I don't <laughs> like, know. I'm just like not like, I know that when I get the time, I can like make something really good, but like I'm can just. Can you ever do that alone? Yeah, I, that that's like my favorite. Like yeah. so, basically, like I'll do the song with people, and then everyone else leaves, and then I work on the song for like a month after. Yeah. Like sometimes songs I put out come out five years after I've written them. Yeah. Like, cause I'm always like going back. Yeah. Like, oh, I remember that song. Yeah. Let me just like change the chords or change the drums. I'm still confused of what <laughs> I part. <do>. Yeah. <laughs> uh, what like. Like technically speaking, like technically what, speaking, what parts do you actually think you can't do? Okay, I am not a good actual technical musician. So like, so like some people they can sit down and they can like play the guitar mm -hmm. and like play the drums. Let's say I'm at a guitar, okay? A normal guitarist would like play chords and like play something. You'd be like, wow, that's good. Mm -hmm. Like I play one note at a time. If I'm on a piano, I'd be like, duh. And then I'll be like, okay. And I could hear what I want to hear. So then I'll be like, okay, I'll add that note and add that. I don't know how to read music. I don't know anything. Like, I'll just like, I know what I want to hear. Yeah. So I like sit down at a thing and like, I can't play drums that well, but like, I can play like enough just to like get it down. Yeah. You know what I mean? So I'm not like technically good at any instrument, but I can You're sit. You're like gifted. I, <laughs> I'm special. <laughs> You're special. I, I can sit at an instrument yeah. and like make it, make it happen. Yeah. Was there like, as a kid, moments where you were like, I'm pretty fucking good at this like music shit. Like I can I can do this really well, I've noticed. Like did you ever have a moment like that? I always thought that. That's <laughs> really? like, like I, I'd go to my mom and I'd be like, I'm gonna be the biggest in the world. I was like, I'm actually gonna be the, it, when I was like 10. Mm -hmm. I was like, mom, like, and she'd be like, what are you going to do? You have to go to college. Like, yeah. And I was like, no, mom, like, you, like, I was like, the only thing holding me back is my education. I was like, yeah. that's the only <laughs> thing. Hold like, I just need kind of, school. Right. <laughs> I was like, I need school to be done. Mm -hmm. Like, I tried to drop out of school so many times. And my mom was like, you're not dropping out of school. Yeah. So, and I have like the most Jewish, like neurotic mm -hmm. mother. <laughs> How does she think of this now? I'm so proud. I'm so She's proud. She's just like blown away. Like, I couldn't imagine if my kid at 10 years old was telling me I'm gonna be like the biggest producer or music guy in the world and like wanted to drop out of school and was actually onto something. Like, that's a pretty surreal thing for a parent to go through. Her like your kid actually doing what they said they were gonna do. Like that's pretty tri like trippy. Yeah, it's weird. Cause both of my brothers in music too. Mm -hmm. And what does he do? He's a manager. Okay. My mom would always be like, she's like, it's one in a million. Like you're not, like you can't, like she's like, you can't rely on that. Yeah. And, was, and she realistic. Yeah. My, yeah. My mom yeah. was like, what am I supposed, you know, I've talked to her about it. She's like, what am I supposed to say? She's like, she's like, <laughs> true, she's like people don't make, she's like, we didn't know anybody who made it. We lived in Virginia. Like it's not like, I didn't even like live in the right city for it. Like it's like, <laughs> yeah. she was like, we didn't know anyone. We knew nobody. I got a record deal when I was 18. Mm -hmm. in what New kind of record deal? I was signed in a group with a guy okay. named Spankrock. So, and it was like, it's like very like left of center. Like okay. it was not pop. I did okay. not start in, I didn't listen to pop music until I made it. So was was it not your preference? Like it, would you rather be writing other stuff? Like pop, no, I obviously you mastered. No, I yeah. loved it. Yeah. I love, I love. Do you listen to pop on your own time? 
I don't listen to contemporary music okay. very often. What do you listen to? Field recordings and like. What's a field recording? Like a guy playing the trumpet in the Congo, or or I'll, I'll listen to like Brian Eno. Is it's mostly like tones and like shifting. I, I listen to like Fela and Delphonics. I listen to Aretha Franklin. I uh, you know I listen to Curtis Mayfield. I love like Prince is probably my favorite artist mm-hmm. of all time. I love. You know, Etta James. I, I, I'm all across the board. But then, like, yeah, of course, I love like to like listen to Drake when yeah, I'm out. Like, it's yeah. like I, 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 and I res- you appreciate good music. Yeah, yeah, and I listen to pop music. Like when they're like, it's like, yeah, I'm so turning on like party in the USA yeah. and being like so happy. <laughs> yeah, I listen to everything, uh, and I get pleasure from all types of music. And it's like I wouldn't do. I've never done a song that I didn't want to do. Yeah. What do you mean want to do? Like I've never like worked on something like just because it's pop and just because I like genuinely love those songs. Like I genuinely love make loved making Kesha's music with her. Like I genuinely (laughs) love like and then at the same time I genuinely loved making Kanye West's music and Lana Del Rey and Rihanna and like there it's just it's all in 303 like and Lil (laughs) Dicky. Like it's like I just want to do I like I want to challenge myself. You know, so it's like, I, that, that's why I became an artist. And what's a challenge for you? Is there a genre that's challenging? Just something I haven't done. That's why I became an yeah. artist. But what's some, like, you mean in terms of like, you once were just producing credit and now that you're doing artist credit? Because I noticed that. That's pretty awesome. Is that what you mean? Like challenge like a new thing to yeah. take on? Yeah, yeah. it's just like, it, it's like this. This is like my new way of describing it that like makes sense. <laughs> Let's say I worked at an Italian restaurant, Okay. And I made Caesar salad on the line. That was like my job. I made Caesar salads every day and I was fucking good at it. Like I like made the croutons, I like grilled them all up, made them the homemade big ones. I got the cheese in there, I'm doing all the right things. And it's like, I made a great Caesar salad. And the guy next to me on the line, he makes pizzas. He makes them every day. And we're making the same thing next to each other for like 10 years. (laughs) One day I'm gonna be like, let me try making a pizza. Like I wanna make a pizza. And you know, when you're a producer, Let's say I work on a song with Kid Cudi. And once that song is out of my hands, he's in control of its fate. He's making the video. He's doing the marketing for it. He's deciding if it comes out as a single or not, or if it's this or that. I think I wanted to be like, I want to make the video. I want to I want to try. I think I I was like I think I have some good ideas. Like I want to try to make the video, come up with like funny marketing ideas, mm-hmm. like do things that really You wanted full control almost? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, to at least try it to know if I'm good at it. Yeah. Like I have no idea. And when I first did it, I was like I thought it was going to be like a really long-term goal and I was like I'll do this. I'll make like songs for four or five years and then I'll have like one that's like big that people yeah. know and then but like when I like Eastside was my first one I put out and then it was like got like so big and I was like <laughs> shit and I was like why'd this happen so quickly and it was like so then I was like oh I guess I do this now I love being the center of attention with like 10 of my friends yeah. not with the world <laughs> yeah. like it's like so that's the only thing that's like for me like the difference of like getting used to that stuff is weird, mm-hmm. but like that side of it. But besides that, I love being in control of the situation. Yeah. Ed, you're not singing on them, so what's like the main difference between it being like an artist and producing credit? It's just me saying. It's like just it's me. Sa- it's me saying it, and me and me making those decisions. Yeah. When you're a songwriter or a producer, it's like you do the song, and then like it's over. Like it's like you give it to the person, it's done, you go make a new song. When you're like an artist, it's like it's your baby. You yeah. like birth it for like nine months. You gotta go out, you gotta promote it. Like it's mm-hmm. like, you know, and I have so much more respect for artists now. I, I never t- took the time to realize like how difficult it is to like go out and it's like doing like five hours of interviews, then like going to a photo yeah. shoot, then going and doing this. And I'm sure like when you were coming up and you were like, like, oh my God, I wanna like model and I wanna yeah. do this. You like see like all of them and you're like, wow, like look, <laughs> they're having like the sickest time ever. Yeah. And they're like, they're like looking so cool and they're like at parties <laughs> and they're like smoking cigarettes and stuff. <laughs> and you're like a kid and you're like, that's so cool. But then like when you're there, you're like, you're like, wow. You're like, I like have been sitting here waiting to shoot for like 16 <laughs> hours. And, and it's like every thing is always like grass is greener and exactly, it's yeah. also totally like woe is me it's yeah. like it's like okay yeah, yeah but you get to do a problems. great job yeah. Yeah, yeah you know i'm kind of curious like your transition from being like a normal dude to suddenly being 
extremely successful and your your name out there in the world in the music industry? Like, what was that transition? And what was there a song that did it? Like, there was definitely a huge transition when I like went to New York and like got signed. It was like, whoa! It's like I was eight. 18 and it's like you're like fresh out of high school and like in where I grew up it's like people didn't look the way they look like in New York <laughs> and like I was like you know I had never like seen that type of stuff like they're like um yeah we're going to this like a, a club appearance tonight and I was like what's that and they're like you know you go in and like they you you drink for free and you hang out for free and then they give you money and I was like wait what like and I'm like 18 years old I'm like great like every like I, everything was just like so happening yeah. so quickly the first things that happened were Katy Perry like the first stuff mm -hmm. um that was your first stuff it was it was it was either Katy Perry 303 or Britney Spears Circus like it was okay. one of those and they were like that was in like 2000 Eight or seven something like that. I think it was 2008 mm -hmm. and how did you get the opportunity at that point to work on their songs so at this point I had been like making like weird music and weird what way like just like left of center like I was making not pop music yeah and we were with vocals yeah yeah okay. yeah with with the spank rock and like I was producing other people's stuff and I was starting to make like a small name for myself okay. and for some reason like it's like every other industry like when one person says something's like says someone's good like I'm sure it's like that yeah. in the modeling world where it's like yeah. if someone's like oh this is the next girl then everyone's like oh okay yeah. we have to well also too it's like different in in the creative world like if someone is good creatively everyone's like let's try it like Kanye like he'll always go for people that could have an idea like let's try yeah. it what's your idea yeah, yeah, yeah he gives it a chance yeah it was like that and i got like all these opportunities and people were like we want to give you a publishing deal and i was like i was like what what's a publishing deal? like i knew nothing <laughs> i didn't even have like a lawyer or anything like how old were you at this point 18 okay and i remember like i was like about to sign a deal and then this like this lady named marav like hit me up and she was like hey there's this guy who i really want to introduce you to and, and she was like, his name's Dr. Luke. And I was like, uh, okay. And like, I, I had no idea who he was or anything. And I'm like, great. And then like, I went to like meet him and like, we had like a, a terrible meeting. Like it like wasn't a good meeting. Mm -hmm. He was like, play me some of your stuff. And I like played him. And I only had like four beats cause yeah. I had been like working on like <laughs> stuff for so long. And I was like so slow and like not good. And I, and I played it and he was like, okay. And then I was like, uh, do you want it? And he was like, no, I'm okay. And then I was like, oh, I'll go fuck myself. All right. <laughs> yeah. So I like left. And then like I went and I went, I had to, I happened to go back to Virginia that weekend. And he like called me. He was like, do you want to make music today? And I was like, what? I was like, I thought you hated my music. And he was like, no, I already just thought it was good. And just like wanted you to, wanted to try to work with you. And I was like, okay. So like I started working with him and this guy, Max Martin. They're like the, you know, the, the, Brad Pitt, Leonardo DiCaprio. They're like the biggest yeah. producers and songwriters. Okay. Max produced um, uh, You Are My Fire. Stop. And he also produced Blinding Lights for the weekend. Like he produced, and every Taylor Swift song, and okay. like he, and a lot of songs with me. But I started working with both of those guys and learned so much because I didn't know anything about pop music. And they were like, Do you want to like work with Britney Spears? And I was like, Sure. And I remember, like, even when I told my mom, I was like, I'm in the studio with Britney Spears. And she was like, okay. And then I was like, mom, I have, like, the number one song with Britney Spears. Like, it's out. And she was like, okay. She was like, but what's your backup plan? Like, my mom didn't get it. Yeah. And, like, parents, like, pick these, like, they pick, like, weird, like, arbitrary things to be. Like, I remember, like, when I was, like, in the New Yorker for the first time, my mom was like, oh, okay, I get it. You made it. And I was like, mom, I, like, I've been making music for, like, five years professionally. Mm -hmm. I mean, they need something that they can understand. Like, that's kind of irrefutable. If you're in the if your kids in the New Yorker, they're like, yeah, okay, like, other people think my kid's special I too. Guess. Like, what do your parents do? Your parents like my par my parents are in the creative industry, so they get it to a, an extent, and were always like encouraging me to like do whatever I wanted to do. That's tight. My but, parents yeah. are not. Yeah, <laughs> that's so cool. So what's a uh, I'm I mean, switching it on you. What's it like? <laughs> what's it like growing up in the creative industry? <laughs> I was like the opposite of you. You were like very much I can do this and I will be successful. Like I was like so negative on myself just had very low views of what I could do possibly like I didn't dream 
of having big aspirations, which is crazy to think now. So I think maybe because they were so chill and like do whatever, I had to be like the parent being like, you know how hard that is? Like, you know, it's not realistic. I don't know. It was, it was me just having like a really low view on myself, I think as a kid, and which I grew out of thankfully, but. Do you yeah. have big aspirations now? I have bigger aspirations Wait, now. But you still don't have big <laughs> ones? No, I do, I actually do. I'd be lying if I said I did What are your aspirations? My aspirations, A, I think one thing that we've noticed with people who are super successful is they kind of like take happiness out of the equation for success and money and fame. You know, happiness is truly my number one aspiration. I do want to be happy and have a great family and have that be a really strong pillar in my life. Like I have to say that because that's the truth. I have many different things I kind of want to touch into. Podcasting was one of them because I actually really enjoy this. And I think I I have a good feeling about it. Feel, no, it feels yeah. like some of these are like really awkward, and yeah. it's like I like the way this one's carrying. It's it's thank you. It feel it feels <laughs> good. It feels good. I like podcasting a lot, and I'm glad that I finally started it. And I can see this like me doing this for the rest of my life, like truly. But I also like have started getting into acting in the last year, which I actually. Modeling, I never thought I could do. Like, I didn't know why I was doing it. I was like, I don't know why I got scouted. I don't know why people are hiring me. Like, I didn't get, I didn't get the joke. Acting, I'm like randomly like not bad at it. And I'm like, I could fucking kill this if I actually put all of my time and energy into this. And like, I've never thought that about fields except for podcasting and acting. So those are my aspirations, which I know is hard, but I actually have like a good feeling about it. I always tell people if it was easy, then like everyone would do it. Yeah, 100%. You know, it's like most people are just like too scared yeah. to jump into something. Yeah. Like they're just like too scared to to fail. Yeah. You know, and it's like, it's cool to fail. Like yeah. it's like I fail so much, but nobody ever, like nobody ever is just like, hey man, Remember those like four songs you put out that like nobody <laughs> liked or listened to? Yeah. They're like they're like, no, they're like, oh my God, like Rihanna Diamonds is my favorite, you know? And it's like, I just think it's so important for like people to just be able to express themselves and not be scared. It's like you're taking a chance. Like this is this is yeah. stuff's like this stuff's scary. Like you can lie and pretend, but of course you were so nervous when yeah. you put out the first one. Yeah. And you're like, you were like, A, am I a loser? Like who <laughs> like who does this? Yeah. And you're like, B are like people gonna gonna like are they gonna engage with this like are like these people that follow me are my friends gonna think I'm like Mm -hmm. stupid like I'm asking people to be on this show is Mm -hmm. it like stupid is it like calling in like a weird fate like and it's like and all those things go through your head like and it's like they they go through anyone's head yeah and it's just like and then like what do you think do you feel like you have like a sigh of relief where you're like oh like people are actually like engaging with this and they think it's chill Honestly, yeah, and even even starting it was was so much of basically that going back and forth of just like fear of failing, fear of all of that, fear of like looking weird or fear of like of just like putting yourself out there as well. It was definitely a, a relief that people liked it and wanted to continue watching it, but I on, like almost made it to a point where it was like on of like the least amount of like that I could not fail to do it. You know what I mean? Like I tried my hardest so I, it wouldn't be like that. Like I, you know what I mean? Like I really, and that's like one of the things that pisses me off about myself is like even to take like risks like this, there is still something holding on that like wouldn't take a bigger risk. That something I'm trying to do more comfortably is is fail harder and be okay with that harder. Yeah, it's okay because it doesn't matter. Yeah. It, like it doesn't matter at all. Like, yeah. like no one cares if this thing failed like yeah. except you to yourself yeah. you know what they yeah. care when when you do something good they're going to be like oh my god like yeah. well the older you get i feel like the more you realize like no one's thinking about you everyone's thinking about themselves so literally no one cares about I know. what i'm doing I know. and it's such a great relief like no one actually it's gives crazy a fuck, you know? when i was younger i remember like i was so scared one day i had like a big pimple in the center of my nose and mm-hmm. i was like Mom, dad, like, I can't go to school. I was like, I remember my dad was like, you know, like, nobody cares. Yeah. He was like, he was like, he was like, you know what? They're going to care. They're going to care for five minutes. And then, you know, what's going to happen? Everyone's going to start caring about their own shit and their yeah. own pimples on their nose. Yeah. And, and I was just like, it's a nice piece of wisdom. It was like, yeah. it was, it was for real. So I'm not scared to fail at all. Yeah. And it's like, the most successful people aren't. Yeah. I'm not really scared. I'm like only scared of like very few things in life. Like what? Um, flying. 
I know you're scared of. Flying. I'm like deathly afraid. Wait, so how did you go to New York? I did took you- a bus. I thought so. That's fucking. And then insane. I literally got <laughs> on the plane on the way home and got off, and then <laughs> and then took the bus home. It's crazy. Funny. I know. <laughs> I took a boat to Europe. That's insane. How long did it take? Seven short days. I've taken a boat. <laughs> I've taken a boat multiple times. Like not like just once. Like I've taken it like three or four times. What's like you're you're scared it's gonna crash? That's what the fear is. I think it's I think it's all control. Like for some reason I have you're this, giving up control. Okay. Yeah. I think for some reason I have this like artificial idea in my head where I'm just like I have control in my life, even though I have no control whatsoever. Yeah. Nobody has control. But in my head, I'm like, okay, if you're like walking around, you have control. Not mm. true. Yeah. If you're if you're like in a car, I have like like I could at least be like I could be like look out like yeah. before like in the airplane like it's like i don't even like <laughs> that's what i say it's like if we're like flying over water like it's like yeah it's like a uh, flying over water was like my like the thing <laughs> i'm most scared about because it's like let's say like you you crash and for some reason the plane doesn't explode you're like oh like you're <laughs> like in like the like, you're, you're fucked you're fucked do you find like you're kind of like a paranoid person and also too about control you can control yourself, but you literally, and that's all you can control. But think about all the other moving parts and every part. You can't control anyone else. Yeah. So you really have no control ever. I know. Is the whole thing. Of course. At any point. Of course. You know? Yeah. It's so funny because I'm so like, people will be like, you're so chill. Like, or you're mm-hmm. so, like, but there's just certain <laughs> things that freak me out. Like, that freaks me out. And then I think, like, but are you paranoid? Like, is it, no. are you, par- like, does this carry on into other things? No. I'm, here's the thing, like, I'm not scared of, like, spiders, bugs. Like, I, here are the things I'm scared of yeah. in life. Let's hear it. Like, the only things I'm scared of. <laughs> Flying, mm-hmm. cancer, and death. Pretty valid fears. No, I'm not scared of anything else. Like, you put me right now, like, take those, like, uh, big planters away, yeah. and there's, like, 40,000 people, and I have to give a speech right now about something I have no <laughs> idea about, I'm I'm in. E- what about, like, skydiving? Like Honestly, like, yeah. I'm not afraid. I've been bungee yeah. jumping. It's yeah. not, it's not, like, it's not heights. I'm not yeah. f- afraid of heights. It's just, like, being in the air. Yeah. Like, it's, like, being, <laughs> like, it is kind of crazy. Like, yeah. we're in a chair in the air. <laughs> like, it's, like, it's, like, nobody even, and no yeah. one even knows how they work. You don't yeah. know how a plane works. No, absolutely. Like, you know how a car works to, like, some extent. Yeah. Like, you have no idea how a plane works. <laughs> I give up that. I know. That need or i guess control of to course, go on because you're a normal person yeah i'm a, 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 i'm i have woody allen syndrome what are you afraid of my biggest fear in life is to lose like one of my limbs or something oh i thought you were gonna say <laughs> something so different i thought you're gonna say my biggest fear is like to lose a loved one lose I mean, one of your course, li- why your limb yeah. why is your limb i don't know like that to me is just like your whole life is i guess because there's a component of that that would make me like less like lovable to, in a sense. I think if I really pinpoint it down, why I'm that's scared crazy. That. What are you talking about? People love people who like. <laughs> yeah, no, no, of course. That's of course, crazy. Of course, they still love people. I think that is my biggest fear, though. Losing a limb, like and whenever, being less lovable. Yeah, whenever I'm like in a car or something, or like I feel like, like it's never like I'm scared to die, even though it is, of course. But like I'm scared I'm gonna get in an accident where like my arms cut off. Like that's what I'm thinking. It's so about. crazy. We all have like these fears and what will make you get on a plane? I don't know. It's random. Like you'll just have like a courage, like a gust of courage. Sometimes. Yeah. I also saw this hypnotist that can get me on a plane. Okay. He's really good. Okay. He's like amazing. He can get you quit anything. Mm-hmm. Like if you like smoke cigarettes or you smoke jewel. I've heard about the Yeah, the Carrie Gaynor. Yeah. Is his so what name. does he do? He, what do you do in hip hypnotherapy? Hip, yeah. So first you go in and He's like, he wears like the same thing. He like looks the same. He like talks to you the same. Yeah. And it's like, I feel like you're getting hypnotized like right when you walk in. It's probably his intention. Yeah. And he's like, do you want like a drink? And then he comes and gets you the water. And then you come in and he drinks it the same way. He's like, (sighs) like he has this like slurp. And it's like, you're like getting so tired. It's like, get out. Exactly. And you're like, getting like, you're like, and you're like, just like fighting to stay awake. He like does therapy for you and he talks about like, he's kind of like talking about what we're talking about. He's like, yeah. well, you got to release the control. You know that like only this amount of plane, like he tells you like all the statistics. And then he like leans you back and he comes over and he like. It's Are your not, eyes closed? Not yet. Okay. He's not like, you are getting very sleepy. He's like, 
picture yourself like in an elevator. And I want you to picture each number and we're going to go all the way up to 25. He's like, and then I'm going to slowly go back down. And when you get down, I want you to lift a finger. And then you're going to do this and you're going to do that. And and we're going to, and now we're breathing and we're breathing slow. And slowly, like you just like get like further away. You're aware of what's happening and you're not like hypnotized, but like, is it almost like a meditative state? Yeah, and it's like you're somewhere in between sleeping and like, but you can hear it, but you're like, you like would never want to open your eyes. Mm -hmm. Like you, like you, like your body doesn't want You're it. in it, yeah. Yeah, you're like in it, and he's like just telling you all the same things he told you during therapy. He's like, you you don't need to be afraid of it. Like, like this the, is- Like the affirmations Yeah, and, and he's over. like just telling you. Sometimes I dip away and I okay. like, and I like, fall asleep I guess and it's like but then like you come back and like you're like you can like hear and you're like and it really is like and you leave and you're like jazzed you're like <laughs> so and he's like he's like I'll see you next time and like how long is a session I think like an hour or less so when you leave are you like I could get on a plane right now like, in the moment you're like okay I see why it's okay to get on a plane okay. you're not like I'm gonna get on a plane you know yeah you have to go like three or four times okay I see how this works. Like, mm -hmm. I see that I'm gonna be okay. And then I get on the plane. I've gotten on the plane with him like a few times. Do you have anything that you like are like, I have to quit? Like I have a really gnarly oral fixation. So I always like, I sucked my thumb till I was 12. I always have to have like some, like to be chewing on something. That's like my biggest thing. Like I always like, you know, it's like, it's like when the jewel came out, I was so addicted to jeweling. And then I quit jeweling. I quit smoking weed and then I still need something to be like doing with my mouth. And I started smoking cigarettes recently. Like whenever I'm bored, I like need to ha do something like with my, it's so weird, but that's like something I need to quit. Cigarettes are so stupid. They're, they're, they're so stupid. They're the stupid. thing that I don't yeah. understand because like wh what a cigarette doesn't even like, like getting high is so tight. Yeah. Like smoking weed is so good. Like, but like, like why are people like, I'm going to quit smoking weed and they're like, yeah. but I'm going to smoke a cigarette. Like, I don't understand my logic either. My, my logic for quitting smoking weed, which I picked back up like two weeks ago was, I, I know <laughs> I was like, why did I ever I quit know, this crazy. immediately? But I just want to see if I could like in New York, I was like waking up and like ripping bowls. I was like, this needs to stop. So I went like a couple months without smoking weed. It didn't help me. I honestly like like the version of myself better when I'm smoking weed. <laughs> like I feel like my I feel like I'm more creative, too. And I don't smoke weed when I work ever. Yeah. What like do you do anything like to like are you ever in a points like with music where you're stumped creatively and you have like, I have no fucking idea what to do. Yeah. And what do you do? Like what helps? Don't make music. Do you just wait like a- Yeah. Yeah. I'll be like, I'm gonna go. I have like so many other things that make me happy in life than like making music. But I, are you ever on like a- Deadline? Yeah, like something like that where you're actually like forced to do it. It's usually like forced to finish something and you mm -hmm. can do that. You can like finish stuff when you're not necessarily like in the most creative space, but like you can't, I, I can't create music like under the gun, yeah. like when I'm not creative, like when I am being creative and it's like you have two days to finish like eight songs and I'm like creative, I'm like bang. Like I love, yeah. like my last album I finished in, in four days. Like for me, weed is like, my prize at the end. That's, like, that's it's like, how I, yeah. I'm yeah. like, I worked so well. And then I'm like, ah. Oh. And like, okay. if I go out, cause I don't do drugs. Mm -hmm. So if I go out, like I need some sort of crutch. Yeah. Like I need some, like do I you drink. Yeah, I do. Okay. I do. But like, but like, I, I need something more than like drink because like right when you're there, like you're not already drunk. So yeah. I like need some, I need like an instant gratification. Like the second I get somewhere, I'm like, I need to be less awkward, like immediately. But you're not awkward. But You're like in, a pretty social guy. I you know, know, but in my brain, like you have you. De I mean, you obviously have a distorted. I have to put on idea. No, yeah. it's like I'm putting on like, like it's funny because I'm like I'm like seem like a super extrovert. Yeah. But it's like social settings like make me like so. Like drained or anxious. I'm just like I'm like. I'm like. Okay, let's go. Like I gotta like prep myself. Like, are you yeah. just are you just like a social butterfly in it? I really I get high off of people, like a lot of people. Like it's it's exciting to me to see a bunch of people. But I don't know. Like I'll still get awkward, like like nervous for like a first date, like that kind of shit. You know what I mean? Like that. Do you that's, get are you nervous on first dates? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, I think everyone kind of is you know to what? a degree. Are you not? I've never really been like person that like 
goes out on like first day. I'm usually like just a friend with someone and I'm like the last guy to know. I'm like, oh my God, like we're hooking up now. Yeah. This is crazy. <laughs> yeah. Like I'm like the last dude to know. Like if someone likes me or not. Yeah. Like You can't read that well. No, I think I can't. I think I'm just like, I'm not like, I'm not one of those guys who's like, man, we're going to go out and we're going to get you, like. You, I feel like you don't care that much. Yeah, I yeah, don't care. Yeah. And I think that like maybe helps me like yeah. even more. It's your like, charm. Yeah, yeah. like, like, because like most guys are like, man, we're going to go out and like get like pussy. And they're like pushy yeah. and they're like talking to girls. And it's the end of the night. And it's like, <laughs> and it's like, they're like, like, be, yeah. being a girl is like the hardest thing in the world. Like, I do not, uh, <laughs> like, like, it's so crazy. Being a woman is so hard. It's like, it's like, Every guy in Los Angeles is like the worst person on planet Earth. <laughs> like like every yeah. man in Los Angeles. And it's just like, you're just like spending your day just like dodging like dickheads all day. <laughs> like just like the worst people on planet Earth. And then like you like find someone you're like, oh my God, this guy's nice. Nah, he's probably a dickhead. He's probably just <laughs> pretending. Like, yeah. and it's like so crazy. Like every, like, like, is it so hard? Mm -hmm. You're like a nice person. If like a guy came up to you, you're not like, no like how you see like something like yeah. you would like give a guy the time of day even if yeah. you had no intention of like yeah. you're because you're just like a nice person and you're mm -hmm. and like so like being like a nice and like pretty person mm -hmm. too isn't it like the hardest thing isn't it is is it is ever am I right? Like, is every person like terrible? And, like, I mean, I can, I look at it too. Like, I feel bad for guys. Like, they have to. They're the ones that have to fucking do that. Like, I don't have to do that. Like, thank, so and so when guys come up to me, I I've never like. God, like I sometimes I'll give them my number solely and I don't respond, but like just because like I'm scared they're gonna yeah, like, yeah, like call me in front of them or some shit. But all I've said to a couple of them like I. I have a boyfriend or whatever it is, but I respect that you came up and like had the courage to like ask me. I'm like, good for you. <laughs> that's for, like the like, worst. That's like no, but like I'm like I respect you enough to like try, but like I'm sorry. Like wait, I has have a boyfriend an, has any? And you'll say you have a boyfriend. I, I, that's my go-to thing. Like I it's, always say, I have a boyfriend, which is it, like it's so you know I I once dated and sometimes this, that doesn't even work. Like, I dated yeah. a girl that said something so cool. When someone came up to her, she would say, "I do, I do have a boyfriend." But that's but that's besides the point. She'd say, I'm I'm just I'm I'm not interested and and I shouldn't have to tell you that I have a boyfriend. Like I've already told you that I wasn't interested. And it's like I do technically have a boyfriend. Yeah. She's like, but that sh it shouldn't even get to this point where I have to tell you that. And like you should be able to pick up on the fact yeah. like at this point you've been talking to me and I'm like squirmish. And, yeah. and then. So, okay, wait, what's one thing, like, has has anyone, like, so what's something someone came up to you and it, like, worked? You know what works is, like, there's no pickup lines, but guys have pretended that they know me, like, we've met, and that always fucking works because I'm entertaining it. And I'm like, oh, like, where did we meet? And they're like, yeah, like, at this place, and it, and it always fucking works, and I feel like a dumbass every time. But and then they're like, no, we've never met. I'm like, fuck you. But it, it's. But the then one are you thing. out? Or I'm not, I mean, I'm never in. You know, I'm yeah. just kind of like entertaining this guy longer than I should. But you've and never it's because of that. You've never been like like you meet someone and like it, it, even if they're like a friend or something mm -hmm. and you're like, oh, you've never had like that moment where you're just like, wow, like this person's like, like just like every like it's just like I'm like I'm so intrigued. Like I'm hanging on those people for sure, but they won't like come up to me on the street. You know yeah. what I mean? Like those people for some reason are like they're not even if it's like the hottest guy ever. It's like weird to me that you're I don't know. Is that crazy? I've never walked up if to a person like that's crazy. It, that's like, that's, that's like, like, so like it's so me. insane. Like yeah. you're just like, hey, uh, do you have the time? Dude, like it's, it's just like it's so it's weird. Like, it's a, it has like a thing of like desperation. desperation. Exactly. Like where I'm just like, don't do it. Like, well, if if we're going to meet, we'll, we'll meet. I've like never met a person like that. And do you know, it could be was like might be the most awkward thing to me. Like I would like if you like slide into like a person's DM <laughs> that you've never met. You have no idea who they yeah. are as a person. Like that's crazy. That's less crazy to me. Like I've had guys slide in my DMs and I'm always amped about it. Like that's more exciting to but me. But it's so crazy. It's it's so insane to me. Like, that's more like though like the modern age dating app is Instagram DMs though. And then like you meet in person. Like how does <laughs> it like that? It, it sounds like my nightmare. I remember I said this once on a first date. It was like oh my god why don't I do this all the time? Yeah. So I remember I like came in and I was like it's a long time ago and I said I never do these and I was like so 
here's what we're going to do. I was like, I'm ordering a bottle of sake right now. We're going to drink this bottle of sake, and you're going to tell me, like, the worst thing you've ever done in your life. And I'm going to tell you the worst thing I've ever <laughs> done in like my life. This is, like, the best first date ever, and I was yeah. like, And I was like, and I was like, that's what we're doing. And then, like, every time since that, like, that I'd ever gone out on a date or ever, like, done something like that, it's like I would start it by something that puts us both in a situation where we're, like, both, like, not uncomfortable, but like vulnerable. Yeah. And we yeah. both just like get to know each other really quickly. Or I'd be like, tell me everything about you in like one minute. And yeah. it's like, it could be like so much. And then I'll do it. And then like, but honestly, like I've always just dated friends. Like me it, too. Like it's yeah. like, I like, it's so crazy. Like to just like meet some, like I've, I don't get that. Yeah. I've never in my entire life, in my entire life, <laughs> met a person. Like there's so many guys that do it yeah. too. I also think you have to be like, like super hot or something mm -hmm. like it's like like for me like like I'm like I'm like walking it like look don't get me wrong like give me like 30 minutes and I can convince you like why you're supposed to be with me and like I'll do like a I'll do like a pretty good job mm -hmm. like like I'll like do like this I'll do the whole thing but it's like if I'm just like a guy like and I'm just like in the thing and I'm like Hey, like it's like that's not work. Like it's like in a nightclub or something. It's just no chance. But I like see people do it, and it's like that's crazy to me. Like if you just like meet, like imagine like meeting a person you have no idea anything. Like I'm so I'd be so petrified. I'm like, is this person gonna kill me? Yeah. Like like <laughs> like they're like. I always tell people you have to be like nice, yeah. funny, and think that if they leave with you, they're not gonna die. Like <laughs> yeah. it's like yeah, exactly. Like, well, I think a part of it and why we think it's so weird is like we both don't put too much emphasis like in our lives for this to be that important. Like we just don't care that yeah. much. But I think that if we cared more, we'd have a more open mind to yeah. maybe like yeah. a guy coming up to you or like you going up. Like we just like don't. Our our window of of who we date is so small because we yeah. don't want it to yeah. expand. Yeah, you know? yeah, and it's like it's like it's cool. Like it's so cool. Like when yeah. I see people do that, I'm like, <laughs> whoa! Like that's crazy. Yeah. Like it's like insane. Like I want to be able to like make sure. Like mm -hmm. like I like I agree. like the worst thing ever would be like being in bed next to a person where you're just like. Do I even know you? Like yeah. this is ter this is yeah. like what what's gonna happen next? Like this is terrible. <laughs> it's just not I don't think either of our personalities. Yeah. I just I agree with you in the sense like I really need to make sure before like I need to know everything about you and you as a friend before yeah. I'll consider even a little bit dating you. I'm just you like know? so sensitive, mm -hmm. I think. Sensitive I think, in what way? Like it's just like I'm just like very sensitive. So I want like everything to be like I'm like a, I don't, I'm like a, a like, I don't know. Like, uh, yeah, like maybe it's like cheese. Maybe I'm like super cheesy, but mm -hmm. I put like, I definitely put something like special around like sharing those intimate moments with mm -hmm. someone. It's like, it's like, like you're giving me all of you. I'm giving you all of me. Like, it's like so, yeah. it's like so cheesy, but like I want us to be like, oh my God, like we're so stoked for this. And it's like, and there's like nothing better than like knowing you're next to the right person. Yeah, I agree with that you gotta like vet someone out you know yeah. what i mean it's like it's like you gotta like at least like know some of their friends no, or something uh, yeah you have to know their friends you have to and they have to be like very well liked amongst their friends yeah they have to i have to know them for a year minimum that's crazy <laughs> really no i mean that's how it's worked like the i've dated one person i was friends with them for years prior what do you and think now holding the, you back? like say it again what do you think's holding you back i just don't i i enjoy being single <laughs> I enjoy being single so like a lot I think and yeah. I just like I don't know it's definitely like yeah like fear of commitment yeah which oh, is another fear yeah yes exactly a good one yeah um definitely fear of commitment I think also part of it is I don't really want to get rid of this quality about myself that bad because it's it's helped me so what? much the fear of commitment the fear of commitment uh. because I it's helped me that I don't care to get rid of it like if I was really putting all my energy into like okay Charlotte like you really need to get rid of this like fear that you have that like prevents you from like really like falling in yeah, deep yeah. with these guys like i i think i could get rid of it if i really try yeah, yeah but i just i think that's also the problem is i don't want to get rid of it that bad so i'm kind of just like in this state where i'm just single all the time which i i know that sounds sad to like people but to me it's it's so fun i think i'm too picky too
Yeah. I think there's a lot of moving parts that are preventing me from dating people. One of my friends is so picky. He's yeah. actually he's actually in love right yeah. now. But is he, he dating someone? He's dating someone okay. for the first time in seven years. Okay. Ever since I've known him, he has been so picky. Like he's like he's like crazy. Mm-hmm. He's like he's like insane. Like what would what's something that's thrown him off? I'll be like did you hear like her voice when the way she says like ours? Like, and no he'll be like, he'll way. be like, he'll be like, she has this like strange like, like, like he's like, sh- it's like shallow how. Like yeah, he's like, yeah. he's like, did you see like her toe? <laughs> yeah. Like, and it's like, and it's like crazy that sort of like way. Irrational. But yeah. but at the same time, he like waited and he found this. He found this person who's who, like perfect to him. Yeah, and he's like madly in love and is like so stoked and just like living so i think that's part of it maybe i i just because i'm so picky not like that shallow but i'm definitely like some one thing i'm like out completely out yeah just like one it actually turns off yeah i'm like the attraction's lost like it's pretty gnarly that's so good that's so good though is that good that's good because a lot of people like like it's like you know when you're dating some well you don't have you You know when you're when, when, when you're with someone and you're like and there's like a red flag and you're like no, 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 no. Like you're like I'll push that to because you're yeah. just so intrigued and you're you have so, the opposite problem and you're so excited. I think you ignore I think, the red flag. I think most people. Yeah, do. really. Like I think so. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think you're like I think you're like you might be. I igno- might be too weary you, of them. You might be weary like for a wrong reason. Yeah, but like it's like a good. It's yeah. like a good quality to be like to you know to be like okay like this is wrong for me. Like what's a what's a wrong like give me one wrong, like a red flag. I, I hate any sort of ego. Like if I if there's a slight ego in like how they talk to people, like even slightly, it really turns me off. Like it's and it's that's probably the biggest <clears throat> filter out of the guys. Like those guys don't even like make it. Like and, and it filters the guys that I that I could possibly date to such a small group of guys because I won't deal with any ego, like at all. Like even slightly. And many of my f- guy friends have slight ego and I love them as friends. Mm-hmm. But that's probably like my biggest pickiness. Like I can't I can't deal with it. Yeah. Do you think like especially in LA, like mm-hmm. a lot of guys have like egos? Yeah. I mean, I think in entertainment as well. Like all yeah. of our friends are pretty much in are a, ma- a majority of people in LA and entertainment and they're all like to some degree I can't blame them in a way like especially singers for example like they're surrounded by a crew of 10 people at all times like that their whole lives are around, like making sure that they are the like the center yeah, of attention star the of best. the room You're- exactly so I'm like I can't even help some of these people like like but then some people are so well adjusted yeah it's no crazy. it is weird it's it's weird so Part of it I know has to do with like the fact that they're in entertainment and everyone's kind of stroking your ego here Um, or your your what your like goal is is so like shallow. So it's like you're either here for like maybe a shallow reason, but like obviously still like good intentions, like whatever. But I don't know. There's definitely a lot of ego in L.A. L.A. has this like very strange. There's like there. I think like Instagram really like fucked it up. Like mm-hmm. it's like there's like this like strange like want and like a lord. Like there's some people who you're like, why are they famous? Why are they this? Mm-hmm. Why are they that? And you're like, and and rather than people like having like career goals and like aspirations, they're like, I want to be like that. And yeah. it's like that's crazy. Like to want to like I, I get like wanting to be a singer because it's like you want to sing and you. But like yeah. they're like, oh, I want to be like that guy who's famous on Instagram yeah. or like. Well, that- it's the difference between like having it root from passion versus it having it be I want to be famous, which yeah. is basically what you're saying. That's what I mean by kind of like shallow like yeah things that they're chasing. And it's like they're just gonna chase whatever it is that's gonna get that's them gonna, famous. Yeah. and it'll be like whatever passion. Sure, but yeah, yeah I'll do I'll that do if it. that's yeah. gonna make me famous. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, like oh They'll yeah, sell their soul yeah. to do it. Yeah, 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 and it's like it's so weird because I never have. Like, I always knew I wanted to make music. Yeah, and yeah, the the ego in in my business, like for me, like the most important thing is like when I am writing with someone, my number one rule, like I used to have a sign on my door that mm-hmm. was like ego at the door. Yeah, because it's like because it if someone's like you're. Like why? Like why do I just don't understand? Like and people do it when they're really insecure, yeah. and people do it when they're getting defensive, and mm-hmm. when they're. But it's like, what's 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 the point? I agree with you, and it's 
because you have no ego at all. And I, I've always known that you you're a very sweet, humble guy. And you you truly have no I think you actually have like a low ego, like if anything, just like just an unrealistic idea of themselves, which is like lower than what it actually is. But I some people don't see it that way. I think you and like hopefully I don't have an ego either, but like saw like notice that you could make friends and people liked you if you were just had no ego you know what i mean but i feel because i've thought about it too i feel like people don't learn that lesson and they they learn young that you have to be something else to get people to like you and they kind of continue that on or not something else but kind of put on this front but yeah and it's the, yeah it's the it's the instagram thing it's yeah. the validation yeah. and it's the this and the followers mm -hmm. and the light and like being like oh it's yeah. like this isn't getting i gotta delete this thing or like it's it's a, it's like it's really sick you see someone you know doing better than you on yeah. on online and you're like what why are they like yeah. we're, i thought we were like in the same lane and like what they're like it they're ahead of me comparison you yeah. know like to a degree that no one was ready for yeah that's one yeah. thing i never that's the one thing like i've never done mm -hmm. because someone told me like early on i remember i was sitting i was sitting in a jacuzzi with someone <laughs> and i was talking to them and they were older than me and i was like do you think i'll ever be as big as like this person mm -hmm. and they were like they said, don't worry about anyone else. Worry about yourself and live your life like in your career and what you're trying to accomplish as like a tunnel. Yeah. Like it's like it's like none of the other people matter. You're mm -hmm. on a mission. You're yeah. going to get there no matter what. Mm -hmm. And it's like I just think it's so unhealthy because you always can compare yourself to someone yeah. else. Like I don't do it's that. It's the thief of happiness. Yeah. Truly, you yeah. just can always do it. It's mm -hmm. like no matter how good yeah. you are, no matter how, you know, it's like if you're if you're, you know, like the biggest artist in the world, you're like, what? How's this new guy? He has like a yeah. song and it got there faster exactly, than I did. Yeah. Or like this young girl, like what? Like you're like a model and you're like, what? How did this girl get this campaign? And she, you could be like so much more successful than her, but you're like, I wanted to get that campaign. How did I not get that campaign? There, it, the limit doesn't run out. It's, yeah. It's crazy. Mm -hmm. Like the things that I like, I know people who are on top of the world yeah. and they worry about stuff that I'm like, how do you even know this? <laughs> like, how did you even like dig this up and find out this information? And it's just like, you think people though at the top would have learned that piece of wisdom that you got told, which is focus on yourself. I think it's also having like real people around you. Yeah. And it's like, I don't know your family or anything, but like I have a, really good support system mm -hmm. you know i have like a good family and like good friends and i have friends of mine that'll be like yo you're being whack like like <laughs> yeah. if they'll be like yo shut up yeah. like like and, and and that's like my favorite thing like yeah. it's it's Put so, me in my place it's yeah. so funny like because i have like friends from home okay mm -hmm. from when i where i grew up in virginia and they'll They'll be like, oh, so how's it going? And I'll, and I'll tell them for like two seconds. And then they'll be like, I don't care. Let's just like, and it's like, <laughs> yeah. and it's so good and so refreshing. And it's like, they're like, they're so far removed. It's like, I have some friends will be at like a restaurant where it's like legit, like mm -hmm. shots. Like, let's say I was buying shots for like 10 people. It's like sick 50 bucks maybe <laughs> like i'm like no i got the drinks and like some of my friends are like are like are like no 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 are you sure like they because yeah. they just like don't get it and then some friends are like dude you, you gotta buy drinks for all of us you got like a billion dollars <laughs> yeah. and, like, and it's like and like it's just it's so cool to have to like always have those people in your life who are just like yo you're like you're not shit yeah like, you're just a person yeah like to like and i just like like some of my friends like i can tell that they just don't have that yeah. in their life i agree with that actually a lot it's just like no one's yeah no one's keeping you grounded i think just it's just how you're raised too yeah. like it's like because i have friends like it's like i didn't grow up really wealthy like uh, i i know a lot of people like especially in la that mm -hmm. <clears throat> grew up with so much wealth and so much like stuff in their family and and some of them like grew, are so nice and so like i have some that like you would never know they never talk about anything or money or this or that and then like others are you know not and, and i always wonder i'm like how did they turn out like yeah like this and the other wh where i grew up that just like wasn't a thing like it's like like insane amounts of wealth we didn't have that and like it just wasn't it's not like out here yeah. it's crazy like la's a culture shock someone came hi hey. come on in let's do it <laughs> Are you getting the swab or what are you getting? Uh, I'm getting blood? a double. No, because those aren't as accurate. The blood. I heard they were no, more accurate. No, blood's not as accurate, and neither is the spit, and neither is the rapid test. Am I right? 
This. <laughs> so what's the most accurate? This one I'm about to get. <laughs> You're like, fuck no. Do you feel that in your throat? No. Perfect. Perfect. <laughs> so when do you find out the test results? Right? 12 hours later. Okay. Because you don't want like the rap. <laughs> the rap. No, it's fine. You did so well. The rapid ones, uh, they're just not as accurate. Because it's rapid? Uh, Yeah, I think they say like some of them are as low as like 58% or something. Yeah. Is it true, like, if you have chlamydia, that can give you a false positive? Yeah, that's what they said. That's crazy. <laughs> Wait, what part about having chlamydia? I'm not sure what the what the interaction is there. I'm not sure, but <laughs> so get the PCR. If you need okay, PCR. thank you. Thank you so much. It's nice to meet you. You um, as well. Like, what was this test for? Was this for anything? Or what's just this? For you? No, yeah. no, no. This is for Monday. I have to work. Mm -hmm. with someone with with not with like a company i'm working with one of my friends in mm -hmm. the studio and i'm not seeing i'm not seeing like i'm not doing anything from now until monday do you ever get nervous that's the fuck thing is no like i don't get that nervous i think it's because i've had so many run-ins with covid for some reason i haven't gotten it i've been to three countries by accident like i started off in london and like when this all went down i had to go home to canada and then i had to come back to the states wait are you canadian I'm canadian yeah where toronto really yeah oh yeah. my god that's why you're so nice <laughs> yeah no toronto's awesome wait but, that's crazy yeah. oh my god yeah but um wow. So I've been around. I don't know how I haven't gotten COVID, um, but it doesn't make me as nervous because I've had so many run-ins and I haven't gotten it. Wait, why did you move? Why did you move to from States? Canada? Yeah, my mom was moving to London because that's I was with her in London, and then. Wait, did you grow up here or in no, London? I finished high school here. I I moved when I was sixteen here, and then my dad lived out here already. Had been for like ten years, and then. Oh, your parents were split up. My parents were split up, and then. My dad and my stepmom lived here and it was you either going to live with your mom in London or your dad in L.A. And I wanted to move to L.A. because it was hot. And then I just started like modeling and shit here. Where do your parents live now? My dad moved to Thailand. So he moved. I, I know. Thailand? I don't know. He's like he's a he's funny. Um, and then my mom still lives in London. Is it hard living here alone without family? My family like has never we've never been like crazy close, which like, cause everyone kind of did their own thing. Both my parents worked like full time and it was like just my mom, me and my sister as kids. And she was like a full time, like working like boss mom, like super awesome. But so we, w me and my sister, and my mom were very three independent girls, like just did our own thing, very independent. So we don't, I don't like rely on my family as much as I see other people do, which I know is like a benefit in some ways, but I also know like I'm missing out on like this huge portion of life that I won't be able to get. And that's probably why I want to have a big family so much. I wouldn't say it's hard because I like, this is just like how it is and it, I enjoy it. You know, I, I just like don't have a crutch as much as other people do, but I, some people have it even less than me. So I don't know. It's, I wouldn't say it's hard because it's it's fun. Like I enjoy my life. Are you and close I, with your sister? We've gotten closer. Like this. Where she lives? She lives in L.A. She lives in Venice. Wait, are you serious? Yeah. How old is she? She's twenty five. What about you? Me and my brother. Yeah. I have uh, one real brother mm -hmm. and then like some full? steps. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, we're we're best friends. Mm -hmm. like What's my, the age difference? Five and a half years. Okay. We're like best friends. Mm -hmm. Like like actual best friends. Yeah. Like we like talk on the phone for like three hours about nothing <laughs> like nothing like it's like we're just we're like talking about like shit and piss and dick like and we're just like we have no idea what we're even talking about and it's like every conversation is just like a joy are you guys similar like would i think that you guys are similar so growing up mm -hmm. my brother was like the guy he yeah. was like he's like the reason i'm like have any confidence anything like he made me so confident from such a young age. Like my brother was the coolest kid in school. Like, yeah. oh wait, like my brother was like hot. Like yeah. the like he was like he was uh, you know captain of the tennis team, basketball. He was like prom king, everything. Like like hot, shit. like yeah. hot dude. Like look, like everyone's like, oh my god, did you hook up with Jeremy? Like it's like like he was the guy. And then he went to college. He had like a a run in with drugs. Mm -hmm. 
and kind of flipped his life upside down mm-hmm. and and then he got clean mm-hmm. and I was working in music and he was like, oh, I'm tired of doing this stuff. Like, let's, like, can I come work work with you? And I was like, well, I was like, I guess you could be like my assistant. Yeah. Like, and I was like, and he came and like my older brother like came and was like my assistant. And then like started getting like- Is like, that like a weird power dynamic? Yeah, but we're best friends, yeah, so it wasn't so, like okay. that. Like he was honestly like a terrible assistant. Like, but like he's my yeah. brother, so it's like this is so many years ago. This is like twelve years okay. ago, and I'm just starting to get like big. And it's like it's so it's like such a cool experience. And like to be able to have my brother with me like all the time was so awesome. And it's like to be able to like pay him to do that. Like, and he's like just getting clean, and I'm like so proud of him. And then he like started finding like he'd be like, hey. Like, I think this guy's good. Like, I might manage him. And I'd be like, oh, okay. Like, and it's like, and then basically he like <laughs> turned the, into like a huge, yeah, he's like one of the biggest managers oh, in music. Yeah, like, like, yeah. like him, him and my friend from Jewish sleepaway camp when I was 13, <laughs> they're partners together. That's awesome. And when yeah. he calls me, I'm stoked yeah. every day. <laughs> I feel like I have that relationship with like a lot of my mm-hmm. friends. I'm not like a partial friend. Yeah. Like, it's like, I'm like, you're in it. All in. Yeah. yeah. It's like, all my friends are different. I have like friends that are like huge artists. Mm-hmm. Like I have friends who are also like, like one of them. One of my friends works for like like FedEx. Mm-hmm. Like and my other friend, yeah. my other friend works for like a, a garbage company. And yeah. like, but then like I have friends who are like you know actors, and it's yeah. it's fun. Like I love having like a dinner party where it's like you're sitting next to someone you would never sit next yeah. to in a million years. Like if it's how like, do they take it? All the people are really nice, yeah. so it like works out. Like yeah. I love putting on like a dinner mm-hmm. and like having like you sit next to someone that you would like never normally ever you would never talk to this yeah. person normally like it's like or cross so, paths yeah even. sitting yeah. next to like a like a like a 40 year old like quiet film director but <laughs> but when you're sitting there at a yeah. dinner and everyone's talking you're like oh what do you do like yeah. oh my god like that's so interesting and like you might find out that like these people that you like necessarily wouldn't give the time of day to mm-hmm. you know it's very easy to judge people like mm-hmm. Especially with like Instagram and stuff, it's like it's like you can see someone's mm-hmm. Instagram and like you have could, an idea of who they are, and yeah. you could think you know, and like yeah. they can be so different. Like mm-hmm. like it's like some people like portray themselves like to be like this like like like. And then like, how do you even portray yourself? Like, how do you even choose that? And like, how do you make it as most accurate to you as possible? I just say my whole thing is like I be yourself because everyone yeah. else is taken. Yeah, you know. Mm-hmm. So it's like, but like, yeah, some people and some people it it changes like it changes how they're perceived in how yeah Yeah. and it's like and you and and just like seeing what other people do you like Mm -hmm. start doing that and you're like why am i doing like it's like well i think that's the allure of instagram it's like people found out that it could change how people see you in real life so everyone's like jumped on it it's like this thing will make my value higher you know what I mean? Yeah. This thing, I have the power to control how I'm perceived before people meet me. It's yeah. like a crazy power we were all given. Yeah. It's very I, bizarre. I have friends also that are like perceived as this thing on Instagram. And then like, they're like, like they have like a personality. And yeah. then in person, like people are like, why aren't you acting like, and they're like, yeah. oh, are you sad? And they're like, no, I'm just not like <laughs> doing not like the right thing. Now, yeah, yeah, it's like, dude, like the craziest thing is like DJ Khaled. Okay, yeah. so like, like I like you know you see him all the time, and then when you hang out in person, he's just like a normal dude. Yeah. He's like, he's like, so man, like what, what's up? <laughs> and you're just like, wait, like are you okay? Like, yeah. and he's just like, <laughs> yeah, like because you're so used to him being like, what's up? Mm-hmm. Like, D-. and then he's like, he's like, hey man, like what are you doing today? That's the hard part about having and carrying a persona is because yeah. I feel like I would always be letting people down because I'm not exactly who they want me to be in every I'm, moment aren't you curious like what do you how do you think like people perceive you like yeah no I, I am curious but like I've kind of like let go of that like wanting to know because I'm just like people as long as I'm not getting negative feedback then I would care but like because I get no negative feedback for the most part I'm just kind of like eh, like I'm not gonna read into this too much hopefully it's fine I feel like there's a part of me that I turned a blind eye to that was like more pathetic than I thought. You're saying you are more pathetic? <laughs> than I thought I was, I think, yeah. What, and you like look back and you're like, why did I say that? Like, why am I posting that? Why? Am- well, like even like with the podcast, like I've been able to see myself for the first time, like really like t- 
talk on camera like for long periods of time and it was like a blind spot to like how childish I I act like in comparison to people I interview who are my friends like my friends like who are like some of them are the same age as me and they're it would that was just an interesting thing that I didn't realize this is how I came off to people well, I feel like you're so professional really? okay good how do you think people perceive you or is that what you wonder I don't know like my Instagram probably like I I do some really like stupid shit on Instagram. I feel like you actually do a good job at like, cause your Instagram's not like a, some curated thing. It's just like you posting shit that you like and things that are good kind of reflections of you, even if it's intentional or not. So it kind of like gives you a good truthful ish window into who you'll meet. You know what I mean? Maybe, maybe I have no idea. I've never, <laughs> I've actually never even thought about it until just now. Yeah. I've never. I've, That's probably why it works. I've never thought about. it. I'm gonna think about it. Well, now. everyone's Instagram is kind of like that. You Some people's are so like. It's like. It's like. Oh my god. It's like so per. Like it's like everything yeah. is like. Yeah. A, is yours like that? Mine's not perfect. Mine's. I don't <laughs> post like, that much. Like it's almost perfect. But it's not. <laughs> well, because most of mine are like modeling photos or like just like like nothing to do with my personality at how, all. How do you how do you feel about that? Like well, that's part. That's also part of the reason why I want to do a podcast. Because I didn't like being rewarded so much on what I looked like. It was just putting too much emphasis on it. Like it's literally the shell that I was like given by chance. It means literally nothing to me. And it, I was being so rewarded on it. Like poor me, whatever. But like, yeah. it was just. It yeah. Just, you're like, there's more to me than yeah. that. And it's like, and it's like, yeah, I know people like that where it's like, mm -hmm. they're very beautiful. And when they post like something that's like actually about them, like yeah. it doesn't get light yeah. and they're like, and they're yeah. like, and it's like a mind fuck. Cause yeah. you're like, she's like, wait, it's like, this is the real me. Like I'm not <laughs> yeah. this like, this like thing. And people do judge people without even knowing. It's like, like sometimes if I see someone that's like a, like, they're like Instagram is like super done up and they're like this thing like I'm going to be like oh you're one of those type yeah, of people and yeah. it's like it's and, like a quick judgment and it, like, yeah. and it and it and it's not fair because yeah. sometimes because I meet some of the people and I'm like oh my god you're like the best person yeah. in the world or I'm like okay I was right yeah. like yeah, like yeah, it's yeah, it, you know you never know well you're forced to make snap judgments in person as well but to get through life you have to you have to perceive things the way that your mind's going to perceive them whether it's negative or positive but yeah I absolutely agree with you Benny, thank you so much for coming on this podcast. We're outside, side note, because of COVID. We are outside. We're in Los Angeles. I don't know when this is going to come out, but if it comes out soon, please vote. That's like so important to me. And if it doesn't come out soon and it's after we vote, then like I hope you voted for the right person and or just cut this out. <laughs> and you probably don't even have to watch this one because like I'm like not cool. Like you can watch someone. Else. Oh, maybe you'll watch it because I asked you questions. <laughs> no, they'll watch it because you're cool. I guess so. It's like starting to rain a little. Yeah. Well, thank you. Thank and you.